Hey, welcome in everybody to the Jetpacks to the Bank post game reaction and preview to the following series show. I am, of course, joined by Andrew Santino, who you can see is the happiest person on the planet across. Yeah, the world. that's a word. <laughs> how, how you doing, hey Andrew? Uh, it was a pretty bad series. It was. Um, I mean, we'll get into that, but you know what? These dictate our emotions. So we're gonna say I'm gonna say we're both not doing well after. Uh, not only that train wreck of a game, but a train wreck of a series. Uh, and that's probably putting it generous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, we started off um, how you said the series. Noah looked very good through two innings, 19 of 23 for uh, balls to strikes. And then he kind of tampered off. Fastball was reminiscent of last year, a couple less uh, notches on the clock. And then he went to his off speed pitch. And then the Phillies Marauder. Uh, who I guess is now our new Achilles heel, Jesus Aguilar, took him deep. And that's, that's not even the guy. All hell broke. I know Rojas did great too, but I mean, I would rather have him keep killing us. He doesn't hit as many home runs. I would, I would much rather have had them never pick up Jesus Aguilar and just have Miguel Rojas continue to hit doubles and singles against us rather than three run homers and, and, uh, and all these extra and another home run today. Um, we're making him look like his 2018 self, where he had 108 RBIs and like 38 homers. So we're making uh, Jesus Aguilar look like right now. But um, what was your reaction to, I guess, real quick, just how Noah pitched since he obviously fared okay and then gave up that one bad pitch, but he didn't look like the normal Noah. He looked like a very good pitcher that figured out how to pitch through a game that he didn't have his best stuff, which is when you know that you have a good pitcher on the mound. That's what he looked like that game. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, like you said, he started off strong in the first couple innings. And, and I mean, overall, he didn't do, I guess, horrible. I, he didn't do what you want. I mean, obviously, especially in a game against the Marlins, you want him to be able to go uh, more than five innings. Um, he only he only lasts five and a third innings. I mean, he finishes the game with 80 pitches, which is pretty high in that sense. And, and like you said, it's not that he looked awful. We've seen him look worse before, but like his command wasn't there. He was able to work around a couple things, and then, unfortunately, he just left one uh, for Aguilar to uh, kind of hit out of the park there uh, and make it a 3-1 game. And then, uh, unfortunately, I think it was yeah, Corey, Corey Dickerson followed him with that uh, double or single after uh, the home run, I believe. Um, then that kind of ended his night. Uh, there and then obviously the bullpen takes over they can't get the job done they give up another run or two and, and it just doesn't go well from there but overall Aaron Nola, I'm not worried about him you saw some good things you saw some bad things again I think they might have rushed him to get to this start we all know he came into camp late so I think he was still trying to figure things out so I'm not going to hit the panic button on Nola yet I'll, I'll get I'll, let's see how he does in the next start is uh I think this was kind of him just easing back into it as well because don't forget he did start at that camp late um, and I think that definitely played a factor. I completely agree. I think that was a big factor. Um, that also could be a big factor why you had a couple ticks less on your fastball. If you're not as loose as everybody else, you're going to probably have a couple notches less. But I, like I was saying, he didn't pitch. He pitched all right. Um, I was more saying, you know, when you have a very good pitcher, when they're able to not have their stuff that night and still get you through five and a third giving up four. That's more what I was saying. He definitely did not pitch that great. He pitched solid and battled through it, but that's when you know you're a good pitcher because guys like Velasquez and Pavetta, as we know, and we'll get to, cannot do that. They have a they have a bad inning, and uh, nothing happens after that. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the case where it might be, but we're moving into happy days uh, first with our second game where Zach Wheeler looked like the Wheeler – that I predict could be top five in the Cy Young, you know. one two nine <laughs> ERA after the first game, four strikeouts, only two walks, one earned run. Um, like what I'm saying like what I saw there. That's about the that's about one of the no, actually that is the only thing I really like what I saw from our pitching this entire series. Uh that out of Zach Wheeler and then a pretty good inning out of Tommy Hunter, so I'll throw him in there. So those two are the only two that I could probably compliment pitching wise this series. Yeah, Zach really did exactly what you wanted him to do. I mean, last year a big issue was when Aaron Nola struggled, he didn't have a, a pitcher to come in and shut the door down the next day, and he kind of continued to 
go through the bullpen. You didn't have a, a second starter that could you could honestly rely on to try to get get a win that following day. And um, that's what you, you sign a guy like Zach Willie, give him all that money, and that's what you hope he can be. And I know it's the Marlins, and, and he's dominated them the, his whole career. So, I mean, I want to see it again his his next start. But I think this is a tremendous sign. He did exactly what you did, and you went from that two starter, like I said. Nola couldn't get the job done on uh, Friday uh, Friday night, so you, you turn to Wheeler Saturday uh, early after or late afternoon, uh, early evening, and he does that. He shuts the door down. He gives you seven strong, strong innings. Uh, the offense backs him up. You get the lead. You're able to bring Tommy Hunter in after, a, a, I mean, a series of injuries last year for him, so you don't have to worry about throwing him, jumping him into a, a close game right away. You can give him an inning in, in that. Uh, big, uh, big lead kind of type role, and you see him give up the double, but he bounces back fine, kind of settled in, and he looked fine. And I expect him to kind of improve along the way. So again, Willie did exactly what you wanted. Couldn't be happier. Great, great job to see him to come in and do that. And he, I mean, it's one game, but that's what you want, and he proved his worth there and uh, showed why you, why you went out and got him. Uh, but again, let's see him do it against a, a little tougher competition and a team. He doesn't hasn't dominated his whole career, but the same thing for him. It was a good first outing to kind of get his way in, new uh, new team, new new role, and all that. And uh, I'm excited for what he's got the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, I really like what I saw because he had good movement on his pitches and a lot of uh, break on everything. Which no matter who you face, you don't all of a sudden have great break on your pitches because you're facing a lineup that sucks. Normally, you either have good break on your pitches or you don't, and you're just not that good. So um, that's. Uh, I, that's what I really liked. If he kind of got outs, that was just because it was the Marlins hitters getting out. Then that would be uh, like Vince did kind of early when he got some outs. And then obviously that did not last today. But to highlight some good stuff from the game prior, obviously the goose is loose. Phil Gosson, Malvern Prep, the pride of Malvern Prep, uh, obviously is already having a better career than first round pick Ben Davis. But, you know, I'll let that go. Um, the... Um, but uh, they're both from Malvern Prep. They're both good guys. Phil's just a better baseball player. But uh, he got the two home runs yesterday, did really good. Sir Didi continues to basically carry our team hitting. And you have Phil Gosselin, Didi, and Adam Hazley being the top three hitters of our team. Isn't that what we expected this year coming in? Right. <laughs> <laughs> is, it that, is it that exactly what we expected coming in? Um, but uh, that moves us into today's game, which, of course— uh, Goose did good when he came in again. He got a hit and then walked um, in the final inning and before a final out. So um, he looked good when he came in. Walker will likely get the start the next game. I keep forgetting we're playing Jay Happ tomorrow, so Goose will likely get the start tomorrow. <laughs> Walker <laughs> will likely get the start the next game. Um, but I really like what I'm seeing from those three hitters. So before we get into the negative, give me what your thoughts are. And also – Quinn doesn't have the results, but like I texted you, I do like some of the ABs he's having. So he do, he only has had a hit, but he has got on base. But especially Hazley and Gregorius and Goslin, and then also if you want to throw Reese in there because he's an on base machine, <laughs> but he just isn't swinging that much. Yeah, I think um, hitting wise, there's only a few positives so far, um, and we'll, we'll get into those in a little bit. Uh, but like you said, yeah, Phil Gosselin, great end of the camp, wins this uh, spot on the team, gets an opportunity to, to continue that success, and he even said it yesterday in his uh, post-game press conference with uh, Murphy that uh, he was, he was uh, very lucky and thankful that Girardi gave him the opportunity, knew he had that hot camp. Uh, hot summer camp to end it. So rather than kind of letting him sit and keep kind of cooling off there in, in this first week, he, he got the opportunity and Girardi gave him the chance to prove it, uh, prove his continued success there in the early going while he was still kind of swinging the hot bat. And, and he made Girardi look great and, and it was a great move. Um, that's why I was surprised he didn't get the start today. But um, no, I think I apparently got... he promised Neil Walker he would start against the right-hander. I heard that when I went somewhere to do an errand in the final innings, and I had Fransky and LA on, and they said he promised Neil Walker the start in the final game. So I guess he didn't want to break a promise. I guess one at bat's still a start, but yeah, <laughs> it didn't last too long. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's um, no, and then I mean we'll get into today's game in a little bit, but. You get a couple different things. 
You mentioned it. Didi Gregorius comes out strong, has the two home runs the first two days, gets multiple hits. I mean, he looks fine. Um, he still got but, a hit today, so he looked okay. But besides that, I mean, JT had the home run, so he, he kind of looks fine. But outside of those, I mean, everyone else just looks lost. Yeah, I don't know if I would agree JT looks fine, though, because his swing looks long. Like, Kruk was kind of saying that. Like, he doesn't look like he has the normal – he looks like he's swinging like a cleanup hitter. Like, basically, he looks like he's swinging for swinging for. Well, and that's why I don't like him in the cleanup spot. Yeah. I mean, you put him in the cleanup spot, he's going to change that approach. I don't think he's meant to go in there and try to hit home runs every at-bat or, or, like, show that power. He, like, I mean, he does it on great contact and then accidental power, I feel like, uh, for the most part, um, and benefits from a small ball, ballpark like Citizens Bank. Um, but, I mean, outside of that, you have Scott Kingry kind of looks lost up there. I mean, he's chasing pitches. He's, yeah, he's only walking. He's that doing too. thing. I mean, Gene Sigurd, I mean, I don't know what he's doing up there. He's trying to look like he's Barry Bonds swinging out of his shoes half the time. I mean, we all know what he's best at. I mean, when you see Gene, I mean, when, when I mean, last year when he went on that huge hitting streak, he was hitting like 320 for most. I mean, what was he doing? He wasn't hitting home runs. No. 500 and he had into, that one swing today. He poked one on a low curveball at his shins into a uh, left field. That's exactly what yeah. you normally see of Segura, a great back control, but he's swinging. Yeah, out that, his that's what he's supposed to do. Get those small hits and he becomes a base runner for the other guys and and that's what you kind of want. And to me, Gene Segura, when he's when he's at his right, which we obviously know, um, we all know what that is. And that's like you mentioned, he's poking the hits, getting singles, maybe hitting a couple in the gap, getting a double hit, doubles uh, as well. And, and to me, you're kind of forcing um, Hoskins into that second spot when I think Segura could be a pretty good second hitter um, if he's in that if he if he kind of goes back to that role. But until then, you're forced. I mean, you have Hoskins in that spot, and I mean, Hoskins actually he, he looks fine to me. He, he people are going to complain about the hits and stuff, but I mean, when I he, think he would be more aggressive in the four spot, though. The guy's got on base nine nine to seventeen yeah. times. He's on base percentage is six hundred. Um, so I, mean, I agree I'm with not, that. He I'm has not going to complain about a guy that got on base yeah. n- nine times in a three game series. I mean that that that's pretty good. I mean that's. You, you do the math, that's three a uh, three game there. In there. So if he's getting on base three times a game, I mean, not many people are going to complain about that. And to me, that's what you want at your two-hitter. He gets on base, and you turn it over to Harper and Real Muto to, to drive him in, and you saw it in the first inning today with the, the home run. Well, I, agree, I agree with that. I just think that's why he shouldn't be hitting second because that's not really what you – with the talent that Reese Hoskins has, you hope that he can – bring a lot more to your team than just drawing walks and hitting maybe 280 because he walked 700 times in the season and then swung it like a hundred times. <laughs> so like, like you kind of want him to be more of that production guy where in the two hole, I feel like he's going to continuously just settle for being basically what Votto was a couple years ago. Cause Joey Votto basically looks like he's back this year right now. So what Votto was when he was just drawing walks and that's about it. And then he hit like two sixty five or whatever he did that one season. Um, like that's a good thing, but at the same time, I feel like that's what you would rather have out of Kutch. Like if you put Kutch second or Gene, you would be like, okay, those guys getting on base. Cause one, they actually have base running. Like they're not fast, but they can, if a ball gets away from the catcher or they can steal every so often, Reese Hoskins is probably getting two steals a year. It's not like he's ever really going. So oh, hitting no. him in the two spots, not as beneficial as hitting. If you put Quinn and Hazley lead off still and hit cut second or hit Gene second or something along that even, nature, that's all it is to me. Even if you just flop JT and Hoskins, I think that's a good point. Fine. Hey. I mean, Hoskins hit two. Or, uh, excuse me, JT hit two seventy five last year. Obviously, you know he can work counts when he's at his best. So, I, I just don't think four spots a good spot for JT. Um, well, where's we'll McCutcheon we'll, hitting if uh, we're taking him out of the leadoff spot? He would have to hit like sixth or seventh. Or, I'm, I'm yeah. assuming they're going to leave McCutcheon yeah. in the leadoff. So if you leave McCutcheon at the leadoff, um, I'm saying you flip Hoskins and JT, and, and we'll see. We'll see what Girardi does. I'm interested to see. Because it's funny, you put up 13 runs in two days, your offense seems fine. But, I mean, we can't sugarcoat that they should have easily scored more than six runs today. Um, six runs was an absolute disappointment compared to what they could have got. You leave the bases loaded. Uh, fifth and sixth inning with one out. The eighth inning, you load them with two outs. I know that's harder to do, but still, you leave the bases loaded three times in one game. 
Like, I mean, that's by the same like, guy twice. I feel like you got to try to do that. Yeah. Um, I feel like then, you have to try to do that when you're the same guy doing it twice. Because well, Segura yeah. left them bloated twice. Well, it's even like, I mean, you, you take that fifth inning, you, you get a leadoff walk, Harper flies out, then JT hits a single, uh, Gregorius follows with a single. Mm-hmm. So you have the bases loaded there. Gene Segura's at bat there, looked terrible. That was terrible. Um, pops up, infield fly rule. Jay Bruce gives it a good ride. Um, I actually thought I had a, a chance to get down, but ultimately just lines out to the right fielder. Then the sixth inning, you get um, you get the same thing. You, you start the inning with a little fly out, the uh, pop out foul territory to first. Um, you get Go- Goslin singles. He ends up scoring, which was good. But then uh, you get the Adam Hazley double, which was probably misjudged by Corey Dickerson, but and ultimately RBI. I RBI just like there. how he's going the other way. Maybe he can teach, like I said in our group message, maybe he can teach our veteran hitters how to hit the damn ball the other way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because it seems like no one that's a veteran can do that. So other I than Bryce. But, this is where it is a little yeah, disappointing to see the walks, obviously, but you still load up. But, again, yeah, if Hazel on second one out, Hoskins walks and Harper walks. I mean, those are two guys you kind of want to see hit. You might want to yeah. drive them in. But, again, I'm not going to complain about the walks that you loaded up for JT. And he looks like he swings out of his shoes a couple times, and he gets an infield fly. Yeah, and it's he like, had the one opportunity, too, and Diddy's been our guy, and he even missed uh, a couple opportunities today when he's been the dude the first two games. So Exactly. Yeah, he comes up, and he follows the uh, routine fly ball to center, so ultimately disappointing. Um, but then, I mean, today you can't say – you can't talk about – this is everything I, I told you and everyone else that I was afraid of coming in the year is the pitching and it just showed how atrocious this bullpen will be and is um yeah i mean vince velasquez is before still vince to, i was going to say yeah before we get to the bullpen though because i'm one i think you know this that looks at ebbs and flows of a game for how it affects the game and if you score that much early i obviously you should be able to still score one of those times with the bases loaded no matter how much momentum you have but you can't have an inning where you're up for nothing against a team like the Marlins. And then all of a sudden it's four, four. And wasn't it Rojas that hit the damn home run too to tie it. Yeah. It's, uh... Who, who's not even a home run hitter who has like probably not even a hundred in his entire career. So like, you get, yeah, like that's just a typical Phillies thing too. You give up a home run to a guy that's not even a home run hitter is the guy that like that. That's just always what we do too. It's like, Oh, who got the big hit? Oh, uh, Miguel Rojas. Oh, uh, San Diaz hit a three run homer. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, Wait, then, like, like, I mean, like the Phillies wanna, always wanna, give up overs to people that never hit home runs. <laughs> and you want to talk about the momentum of the game, which is great. And the way the game's flowing. I mean, let's dive into it real quick. So the first thing, the Phillies get a Hazley single, uh, Hoskins double, Mm-hmm. Harper Homer, three nothing. Exactly. Couple up, couple up bats later, uh, Segura singles, and then Jay Bruce gets an RBI triple. Show up four to nothing. Mm-hmm. What do you want? What do you want after a four run inning, a shutdown inning? What exactly. do the Phillies yeah. never do? They don't get the shutdown inning. And, and this is proving your point. I just want to explain what happened. Uh, so that's when, as Joe just mentioned, Rojas ties the game up. That happened the very next time Vince went back on the mound. And I get it. Vince isn't Aaron Nola. Vince isn't Zach Wheeler. But you can't. You like. This happened last year, too, and they mentioned – I forget it was mentioned in our group chat. I mean, this just reminded you of the game last year where the Phillies went out, gave Vince the 7 nothing lead against the Marlins, and he, he found a way to blow it. Well, you come out here, go 4 nothing. Vince turns around, gives it up. What happens in the next inning? The Phillies score in the bottom half, get their run right back, take the lead again. Um, and then what happens again? You give up two runs, and you lose the lead there. And that was the last time the Phillies had the lead. Yeah. Uh, but after going up four nothing, you get outscored. What I mean, what was the final? Eleven to six. You get outscored, uh, eleven to two to end the game. To not the Dodgers, the Marlins. Like, it's just such a disappointing weekend. Um, you absolutely needed to win. I mean, I guess yeah. you didn't have to because you're obviously still in the race. This is a series you really, 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 really wanted, uh, considering who the talent you were facing. And now you're gonna bring in, uh, what some people believe to be the be- one of the best teams in the league in the Yankees. Um, and after they go out, beat Washington uh, two out of three this weekend. So you got a good, you got a good Yankees team coming in here. And with that offense they have, and the pitching we have, it's going to be scary. And yeah. I mean, I talked to you off the off off here before, but I mean, I'm already worried. You can basically almost count one of the games as a loss when you're facing Garrett Cole, arguably the best pitcher in the game against Zach Eflin. 
Yeah, I do think we might be able to win tomorrow, though. Granted, our offense has to jump. But uh, Jay Happ, I personally think, is kind of done, or at least towards the bullpen era of his career. So, um, Which I believe that's the case with both these guys. Which I, don't, why, I think that's kind of the case. But that's going to be an interesting <laughs> game because there's two guys at the twilight of their careers uh, matched up. But real quick before we move on to tomorrow's game, Vince Velasquez, since July 24th of last year, Johnny Heller tweeted this out, has a ERA of a 14.46 against the Marlins and an ERA of a 360 against every other team. <laughs> how how do you pitch that much better against every other team in baseball compared to the Marlins? That doesn't even make any sense. Well, I understand I mean, that, everyone struggles that, against teams, but... That's bad in itself. That drives me crazy. I... But I just want to know, when, when you're the front office, I, I mean, you know, if we know all these stats and we know what's happening. How, how do you get fooled every year by this happening? Like, I just, I well, don't, that's why I don't understand. And the same thing, and it, not, it just goes beyond him. I mean, same thing with, like, I mean. Well, how'd you everyone, put it in, actually? Because matchup-wise, not to cut you up, but you go off of matchups in today's game. Wouldn't you have thought, I think Arietta actually has pretty good numbers in his career against the Marlins. So wouldn't you have thought matchup wise you would have went Jake and then just said, well, Vince looks good and can't be pitched five strong against the Yankees. Let's hope that happens again. I'm just saying if you're going by the way that people think today's game, you would think you would have never even started Vince Velasquez against the Marlins. Uh, two things to that before I finish uh, my point. First off, I really truly believe this. You know, Spencer Howard's coming up in, in, after six games. They did the service year thing. I honestly think they were setting up the rotation for him to be the three spot. I, I think okay. they, they very well knew he's replacing Vince, put Vince up there, and Vince looked good in camp, so I think they wanted him to try to kind of be continue that success against a bad team, and they'd rather Arietta face the Yankees. So I think they wanted yeah. Arietta over Vince to face the Yankees, one. And two, I would think they're truly, truly setting up and I could be wrong. Again, I'm just, this is all speculation. This is no sources, no nothing. I, I think once these six days are up, I think Spencer Howard takes Vince's spot, um, especially because this, this is a 162-game season. You don't have the opportunity to give Vince four starts, try to get get his rhythm, try, get, try to get his game down and figure things out. No, this is a 60-game season. You can't afford to have four bad starts from him. That you gotta pull to me. You have to pull the trigger right away. You, you need to put him in the bullpen, try to find himself there. I mean, and then th- this goes to my next point. You obviously, if you call Howard up, you gotta get rid of somebody. I don't know what this team's. No, no offense to him. I mean, I, nothing against him personally, but I mean, that you'd say the same thing off what you're watching. I don't know what this team's season call Irvin. I mean, I feel like this guy comes in every game and gives up runs. Um, I mean, today he comes in and gives up four runs in one inning, <laughs> five hits in one inning. I, I mean, th- th- and this like. Well, I can tell you that answer. It's because unlike everyone else in our bullpen, he can actually locate the strike zone. You want to know what the but, big problem is? He throws it right over the middle of the strike zone. But that's not <laughs> like, but, but a point. It maybe compared to what we have now. But like, how does he make the team over a guy like Robert Stock? How does he make the team over a guy like Francisco Liriano? How does he make the team over? Because like, he can just, hit the strike. No, I don't know about Liriano, but but, but so can, with so Robert those, Stock, because he can hit the strike zone. Robert Stock has no control. And that's what I just. That's, I just. That's why. Don't I don't agree with it. I'm just saying. I just don't understand how these these things keep happening. And I mean, listen, I, we're. I think at this point you you're kind of giving up on Vince too in the starting rotation. And I'm not. I'm really curious. I feel what, like they're giving one more start personally because of that stat I just read. Everything goes off a of matchup today. They're going to go. Oh, we tried him against the Marlins. He sucks against the Marlins. It didn't work. Let's see what he does against such as. It's also going to depend how good Eflin does. Because if Eflin sucks in this first game or Arietta blows tomorrow, obviously that's going to have a factor. Then you have a decision between three people of who you want to kick out of the rotation. So Yeah, but my, so anyway, my, my point was we're obviously not big Vince people. But I, I want to know, and I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a chance to watch post game yet. And I will later. Um, I, I'm interested to see what Joe Girardi has to say because I'm sure he was asked about this question. But even a 60 pitch Vince Velasquez in the third inning, obviously it's not good. But wh- why are you taking him out there to put in Cole Irvin? Like, 
I'm more worried about Cole Irvin coming in than Vic Velasquez. <laughs> I mean, especially when when you're yeah. the inning. I think he came in the fourth inning. Uh, Irvin did. Francisco uh, Francisco Cervelli. He's a right-handed hitter against the left. Like I, I don't know why you're not leaving Vincent in that case. Uh, I think or Diaz, putting Pavetta in since you put. Not that I think Nick Pavetta is great, but I'm just saying since you put him in second. It would have made more sense to put the right-handed long reliever in. Oh, no, right they, they put Pavetta in later. They went... Um, oh, no, no, they went McClan. That's yeah. right. They put McClan in in between. But you but, should have still put Pavetta because he pitched three in a third inning. Why didn't you just put him in first? I think at that point, they were just riding Pavetta because, the, I mean, they you can't score any oh, runs. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. But, I'm just... Well, my point is, so then you have Diaz come up. And what's he? I think he might have been a lefty, right? Yeah, yeah, San Diaz but, is left. Nice but then you have Miguel, Miguel Rojas. He's a, he was a right hander, right? Yeah, Rojas is a right hander. So, so yeah. two out of those three for sure hitters in that inning were both righties instead of lefties. That's why, again, it's I'm not I'm not calling for Girardi because obviously he's a fantastic proven manager. But I'm just interested to hear what went into that the decision because just from an outsider's perspective here you think they would have rode or i'm like maybe you do take vince out but like you said i, I would have went with the righty and pavetta like i just want to know like what, my guess is pavetta can't i think i don't agree with yeah. it but like i said no one can locate the strike zone on our team i guess he was like eh at least irvin can throw strikes but like i said the problem with Carl irvin is he his strikes are strikes that i could throw they're literally right down the middle it's like it's like the catcher's setting up right here, and it's right in the happy zone. <laughs> That's Cole Irvin's strike. But, I don't know, but it's even even like you said, though, like, why not Pavetta there? Like, you don't – you have the DH. You don't have to worry about him hitting. Um, he's a right-handed pitcher. I, obviously, there's two – again, there's two, two out of three righties. I'm kind of interested to see Pavetta in that situation if you're going to take Vince out. I, I just I, – I don't know why Cole Irvin – because you have the lead. Like – you're pulling Vince with the I lead agree. as bad as you did. You still had the lead. I don't know, but that, especially that's... with how uh, Pavetta, Ricky Batalico too. I know you can't see all the pregame, but the other it was the pregame for yesterday's game. Uh, he was saying he thinks Pavetta could. They might end up using in pivotal parts, like eventually, since they move him to the pen, like at the back half of game. So if that with that logic, you should have then used him to be your stopper in the part of the game when you had the lead rather than someone that you know is normally only getting put in a game if you're down by a lot or up by a lot so you don't want to use any other pitchers in a call Irvin so that's uh that's kind of the way I look at it but we had a good rant so I let it go a bit but we did go a little long on our first uh post game uh well that's I mean, we we're trying to cover up three games there yeah. we'll, we'll get better because we're going to limit it back down to one game Usually, um, but yeah, we, we just had three, three to get over yeah. there. And well, when it... well, who's your prediction though? Because we have two, um, like we said, kind of at the tier half of their careers, to say it nicely. Um, pitching tomorrow between Hap, who really J Hap um, still has good movement on his stuff and stuff. The problem is he leaves his fastball right over the zone at this point of his career. So normally you can score a lot on him unless if he's has one of those games, he really just hones it in, but he hasn't really done that since being on the Yankees. Um, where Arietta, hopefully, like we said before, we get the Arietta we saw in the first half of 18 and the first three starts of last year, and then we'll be good, but you know, <laughs> who knows? So what's your, uh, What's your uh, prediction for tomorrow's game? Got two guys in the twilights of their career. I do think us having a righty in the twilight of their career helps us against the Yankees, though. Because if we had Jay Happ, if we reversed that, I don't know if I would have felt as good against the Yankees. Because when we have Jay Happ going up against Judge, Stan, Gliber Tour. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so I feel like I would much rather have the righty at the twilight of his career is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm. Listen, I I think if Jay Happ coming in, it's his four, first game of his 14th major league season. He's coming off uh, probably his worst season last year. Gave up a career high in 34 home runs. You're, you're in your home ballpark, obviously a hitter's park. Um, I think uh, I, I think the Phillies win the starting pitching matchup. The starting pitching matchup. Um, I think uh, I, I'd rather Arietta coming out here. Um, I'm not. 
you know, I'm not the highest on him this year. I know a lot of people are saying he looks good in those videos. Um, and we'll see what he does. The, the, the issue here, though, is, I, I mean, who knows what happens. He can give us six quality innings of one-run baseball, but then you're turning the ball over to a bunch of question marks, and, and, and I don't know what you're going to get out of it. Because here's the scary part. You mentioned those lefties, but – who are you trusting out of the pen the most? Outside of, obviously, Nares and Hunter, it's a bunch of lefties. You're going to have Alvarez and Morgan. So, I mean, if you have to bring in these lefties to face some of these yeah. hardcore right-handed hitters, that's scary to me. Like, obviously, I mean, what? You would want to say probably right now, Hunter's probably the setup guy. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if Arrieta gives us six strong innings, Tommy Hunter, especially with his in- injury history, he can't give you two innings yet. Um, so no, I wouldn't try that. So if you got, I mean, obviously it's all going to depend on matchup and what happens throughout the game. But if if Arietta's got to get taken out, I say in the fifth or sixth inning, who are you bringing in? Morgan to face Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge and all the guys you just mentioned, or Jose Alvarez. I mean, that's what's so scary about this, and you don't have anyone you can just full on trust in that situation. So again, I think the Phillies win this pitching matchup, and I think again, obviously situational hitting hasn't been there for this offense yet. Um. But I, I think ultimately, I mean, you saw what they did against the lefty yesterday. I I, I think Arietta outduels Hap. I think the Phillies will jump out to a nice lead, yeah. and I think I That's think tomorrow. And I think tomorrow it's not going to be a Vince situation where you got to rush to the pen in the fourth inning. I think well, I think the Phillies ultimately end up still winning tomorrow, in the sense because you can have Arietta get you to the fifth or sixth inning, and at least you're going to a Morgan or an Alvarez who you can trust more than a Cole Irvin. Um, yeah. So I- I'll pick Let's the Phillies. Let's give the ball to good old Diolis Guerrero, you know, the righty that <laughs> finished the game last game, you know. <laughs> um, but I think ultimately the Phillies will end up getting a win tomorrow. I, I think they jump out strong off J.A. Happ because, I mean, you'll get McCutcheon back in the lineup leading off a right-handed hitter. Um, I think McCutcheon Hoskins there, and then Harper's not afraid to hit lefties. Expe- I mean, I think at this point. Either is Diddy. As we um, saw from a bomb into the second deck. Yeah. Game two. I think at this point, Jay Happ might. I mean, I hate to say because I like Happ. But he, he, he pitched minds... great in 18, but that injury killed him. Like, yeah. once he came back from that, he just looked like a shell of himself. Honestly, to me, I kind of I can kind of picture him being close to a Derek Holland at this point when I mentioned Harper. And I could just picture that grand slam. Like, I, <laughs> I kind of see Happ leaving that ball up there and Harper getting a nice hold of one. Um, so that's why I, I think again t- tomorrow I think they bounce back with a win. Um, obviously they both have it, but Yankees are the ones traveling once again to start the year. Um, you have a veteran here who knows how to kind of step up in a situation, get your team off that uh, losing spot yesterday. Oh, well, at this point tomorrow would be yesterday, and then um, yeah, I think I think Hector Neris uh, picks up his first save tomorrow night. Um, Baseball's hard too, but I'll give you a score prediction. Um, I'll say Phillies win eight six. Uh, Jake Arrieta last five innings, um, five innings by four run ball, and then yeah, who knows what, who they kind of lean to there. I think uh, Reese gets his first home run tomorrow night. Um, so I'll, I'll give you my star of the game tomorrow will be Hoskins on the offensive end. That's a good one to pick because the right-handed uh, lineup. I- I'll go with uh, my main man from the local area since I think he'll be in the lineup against a lefty, probably DH. So I'll go with Goose as long as he's in the lineup. If Goose is not in the lineup and Joe Girardi makes a big mistake, then <laughs> I'll go with uh, Diddy Gregorius since he kills lefties anyway. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, I hope you're right. I mean, the Phil Gosselin, but, it's, it's fun to watch that. The- um, you know, I don't know how long it's gonna last. No, no, it's gonna last. He's gonna keep um, hitting him against the. He's gonna keep putting him in against great matchups. He's gonna make Goose look like he's like I love Gossam, but Girardi, I think, is just gonna make him look so much better than he is even because he's just gonna be like, oh look, the perfect matchup for Phil Gosselin, and then he's just gonna be hitting like two eighty in like three weeks because Joe Girardi's just like has a man crush on Phil Gosselin and literally just puts him into the most perfect situations. And then everyone else, it's like, hey, Neil Walker, you're hitting against Chapman. It's like, excuse me? 
Oh, <laughs> uh, like, like everyone else, he's like, yeah, you know, I just care about getting Phil Gossman into the perfect suit. Um, but uh, no, that was a joke. But anyway, it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to win because I think F or not Eflin, uh, Arietta is going to get us through five, five and a third. Like you said, three, four runs. And then it's going to be interesting, the right handers. But I think we'll be able to score six or seven off a of half. Um, so if we do that, I think we'll be set up pretty good when Arietta comes out. And if we have to go to Russo or uh, Diolas Guerra, I would probably go with Guerra first because he's a veteran to try to get the righties. If you're going to go with a right-hander, we'll see what happens there. But I agree. I think we'll win. I'll go 7-4 to four because I think we're honestly score all our runs off a of half, and then the Yankees' bullpen will probably kick our ass. So. <laughs> if we score six or yeah. seven off a of half or score one more off of the Yankees bullpen. I'm interested to see what kind of lineup you already puts out there tomorrow. Obviously you mentioned, we mentioned today, uh, Phil Gosselin does the two home runs yesterday and he doesn't worry about that hot plate appearance. So he benches him today. I'm interested to see Adam Hazley goes out there, goes four for six today. I'm interested to see, does he stick with Hazley against the lefty? Does he go back to Quinn? Um, another name I'm interested to see to get a start here. You got a lot of lefties coming up this week. Um, especially against the Yankees. I'm pretty sure Montgomery's a lefty, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got you got three of the four games against the Yankees this week, all against lefties. Um, and Jay Happ being a lefty, uh, James Paxton being a lefty, and then Montgomery uh, being a lefty, and then Nicole's the lone righty here. But I, I bet you – I want to see him get a start because there's a lot of talk about him coming in and winning the spot. I, I don't know where or when you'd start him, but Kyle Garlick, I mean – I think this is a week he might be able to get that spot. Um, but again, yeah, he, he could knows. start in the outfield though. He doesn't have. I don't to know. Can he play pretty, center? I, I know. I know he's. I don't a, know if he can. Play I know he's a corner. He's a I don't know much about his defense. I don't know if he can play center. Put Bryce um, in center for him, and then just put Garlic in right. Bryce can play center. He's played. That's an option. Times. I mean, maybe. I don't know how early you call a guy struggling, but obviously Gosling can go from outfield to infield. So maybe against. Against these lefties, maybe. Uh, I mean, I was, I was looking at the stats preview in this. Didi's got 20 plate appearances against Jay Happ, which obviously is not. That's a pretty good number. He's hitting 100 off him. That's not many hits. So maybe you kind of, obviously, Gregorius coming off some injuries last year. Maybe this is a chance give to give him a rest. rest. Put Segura yeah. short against the lefty on lefty. Maybe Segura's obviously swinging out of his shoes, as we mentioned. He's kind of struggling here on the early going. You see McCutcheon get a day off after struggle. Maybe you give Segura a day off. You can put Gosselin at third. It's going to be interesting to see. I know Girardi's creative, so we'll see what kind of creativity come, he comes up with. Also, another thing to note um, about the lineup tomorrow, you had JT catch all three games this weekend from a 7.05 to a 4.05 to a 105 starts. That's kind of rare to see a catcher continue to go back-to-back back with that short, short amount of uh, turnaround there. So maybe... JT's your DH tomorrow night against the lefty, and you give uh, Andrew Knapp the start. Uh, so I, they got a lot of options. I, I don't know what Jari's going to do with the lineup tomorrow. Um, again, obviously six runs isn't a bad number, but the way it played out, they had five plate appearances with the bases loaded. You get zero hits. Who knows what they were overall with runners in scoring position in this series. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't see that final number. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, it should be interesting. Obviously, it's just one series. If it was a normal 162, there'd be a lot less to kind of worry about because obviously you have a lot more left. But um, 60 games, and I guess you have. And here's another reason why to kind of stay calm is eight teams make the playoffs now. So really, if you think about it, you kind of. I know we're kind of running along here, so sorry about that. Um, but you kind of compare it to the NBA and NHL. You kind of see those teams with less than low. I don't know. Get it wrong. I don't want the Phillies to go below 500. But you kind of see a lot in the NBA and stuff. A lot of teams do make the playoffs under 500 when eight teams make it. So you kind of just got to play 500 ball to get into the playoffs. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. Again, obviously, I want the Phillies to win the division, do a lot better than 500 ball. But I'm saying in terms of playoffs, it's way too early to kind of worry about that, still, in my opinion. I, I, I have no doubts. I think the offense is going to be ultimately fine. The bullpen scares me, and uh, that's, that's what I got left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the pitching. It's the pitching, pitching, pitching. That's what uh, we'll leave it on. I mean, uh, I think their <laughs> offense obviously needs to hit with runners in scoring position. But against the Marlins, even if that should have still been a game, 
you go up four nothing, even if you struggle with the run and scoring position against a team like the Marlins, if you actually got the pitching in the offseason, that should have still been a game you even won while doing that. Like last year, we had games that we won when we left like 12 people on because we're playing a crappy team and we still scored like three or four runs. And then we won like four to two or four to three. Yeah, we still didn't have that good of a game. We just managed to find a way to win. Um, that should have been able to be a game like this, but our pitching is we have no pitching this year because Glenn Tack decided to add nothing other than Zach Wheeler. So, um, yeah, you know my thoughts on that. So, <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, another reason why not to panic is baseball. Anything happens on any given day. Um, and I mean, you look around the league, what happened this weekend, and you had outside the Phillies, you had a lot of other crazy stuff too. I mean, yeah. if you would have told. If you would have told me the Phillies lost two out of three of the Marlins, I would have thought that was kind of crazy. If you would have told me the Tigers would have upset the Reds, won two out of three against the Reds, that would have been crazy in itself. If you would have told me that the Baltimore Orioles found a way to win two out of three against the Red Sox, that's pretty crazy in itself. Um, I mean, I think it's that a long first shot. first game series luck for the O's. They right? beat the Yankees <laughs> last year in the first game in the first series, too. <laughs> I think it's a long shot, but you got Sunday night baseball tonight. Giants Dodgers. If the Giants somehow find a way to win tonight, they find a way to split against the Dodgers to open the year. Who's pitching that- for? Oh, yeah, Drew. Drew, give me the ball, Smiley, like I tweeted, because he pitched a relief appearance and now he's starting. See, we need that on our team. Why did we not bring him <laughs> back? Like, like you have a guy that literally says, "I'll pitch a relief appearance and then give me the damn ball to start." The Phillies don't even have somebody that wants the ball in general. So. I- like, be helpful to have something like that. Eh? Um, so yeah, it's it's been a crazy weekend in baseball in general. So, I mean, they they have it in that sense. So it's been fun. Um, that's definitely, that's why it's definitely very fun. Yeah, it's fun. Even as painful as this weekend was to watch this group play and stuff, it was fun to finally get to watch watch these guys again. And uh, I mean, again, not the results you want, but at least it's back and. Again, I think we'll settle in eventually, uh, and we'll still get in. But again, right. you're gonna have you're gonna have the brave, brave Braves and Mets for the other Sunday night games after this weekend. You'll have three teams out of the five in your division at one and two, um, and then you'll have the Marlins at two and one, which I want to say you can overcome. But if we can't beat it, we're not gonna overcome it, maybe. Uh, but then obviously. I, Braves or Mets will be two and one. Whoever wins that game, so kind of what you expect there. So it's it's going to be a race to the finish, that's for sure. I agree, I agree. But anyway, this has been our first um, taking it slow, just as fast as we can. Like uh, I think that was Luke Bryan, whoever sang that song, um, as they say. <laughs> but uh, that's uh, how we did this post game show. The next ones will be a lot quicker since we're only going to be doing them on each game rather than. Yeah. recapping the series and the last one will be on recapping the series but this has been jetpacks to the bank post game for andrew who you can find at aj underscore santangelo he writes for pub sports radio he has his own baseball show with jose who's awesome as well on pub sports radio so check them out and then uh you can check me out at jj Bora 26 on twitter true underscore philly sport for our podcast and spell it out true philadelphian sports cast now on tumblr and instagram as well so this has been jetpacks to the bank our post-game reaction show for andrew i am joe hopefully we have a much 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 better series against the bronx bombers peace out everybody <laughs>